we've got a few new products for Actobotics. We've got these lovely stepper motor mounts. Stepper motors are very useful for all your different control applications or anything where you need precise steps of movement. We have them in these three different sizes. We've got them in a NEMA 23, a NEMA 17, and also a NEMA 14. The NEMA actually refers to the frame size of the motor. The NEMA 23 matches a 23 size motor, of course, and then the 17 and the 14, respectively. Many of you might be wondering what does the NEMA 23 or NEMA 17 refer to? It's actually the outer frame size of the motor, so a NEMA 23 is actually a 2.3 inch, a 17 is a 1.7 inch, and of course the 14 is a 1.4 inch. There's also, I think, a NEMA 11, a NEMA 34, and a couple other sizes, but the 23, the 17, and the 14 will be the most common sizes. And um, Nick is gonna show you how to hook these up and interface these with the Actobotics channels. Let's talk about these new stepper motor mounts from Actobotics. You may remember from our video on linear motion that if you combine a timing belt with one of these channel sliders, it creates a really nice stable platform for linear motion. But if you want nice precision repeatable linear motion, you need the right kind of motor. And in this case, the motor that you want is a stepper motor. The nice thing about a stepper motor is that it moves in tiny steps that you can record and repeat reliably uh, so that you have the slider moving to the same position every time. This comes in handy when you want to do something like um, draw or print or automate some assembly process. So uh, before these mounts, it was a little bit difficult to get a stepper motor hooked up to an assembly like this. Now that we have these mounts, it's as simple as bolting the mount to the stepper motor and then bolting the stepper motor to your piece of channel. Here you can see I've created just a very simple channel slider using a couple of Actobotics parts, a quad bracket, channel slider, a piece of timing belt, a couple pulleys, and uh, some bearing blocks. So uh, I've actually taken our larger stepper motor and using this size bracket, I have connected it to this channel with some standoffs and uh, actually used a set screw shaft coupler to couple that to a drive shaft that'll go all the way through the channel. That way I can support it on the other side with a bearing block. So uh, I'm actually gonna take this mount off of this piece of channel to show you how this uh, mount connects to the stepper motor and then I will connect this smaller stepper motor to the same piece of channel to show you how that mount is going to hook up. So first we're just going to take our Allen wrench and disconnect these standoffs from the channel. Now we will take a slightly smaller Allen wrench and we're going to use that to disconnect the set screw on the coupler that has the uh, stepper motor coupled to the drive shaft. And we should be able to now slide this off. And I'll go ahead and undo the set screw on this side and pull this coupler off. And now you should be able to see sort of how this mount connects to the stepper motor. Uh, it actually comes with these large screws that you see in the back here that connect from the back of the stepper motor into the bracket. And uh, those have a number four hex head on them. So if you have a number four Allen key, it fits right in there and you can um, torque those in. It's really as easy as that. The bracket just fits directly on the front of the stepper motor and then you use the included screws to bolt through the back of the stepper motor into the mount. Now the mount has the uh, Actobotic screw pattern on the front of it and this is the screw pattern that fits the outside holes on the Actobotics pattern. So uh, they've cleverly countersunk the heads, uh, where the heads of your socket head screws are going to go on the back of this bracket. So you can put screws through the back, 
then bolt it to the front of the stepper motor and you don't have a clearance issue between the top of the screw and the front of the motor assembly. In this case, I've actually gone from the back of the bracket into a standoff and I've used the standoffs to create a little bit of distance between the stepper motor and the channel. Otherwise, you don't have room to get your shaft coupler in between the motor shaft and your drive shaft and still get a pulley on the drive shaft within the space of the channel, which is somewhat limited. So I'm going to show you how this works uh, assembling the bracket, but I'm going to do it using this smaller stepper motor. You can see I've already attached the bracket to the stepper motor. And with the smaller size, it actually comes with four uh, Phillips head screws that come from the front of the bracket and go into the stepper motor, because these motors actually have uh, threaded mounting holes on the front of them. So now uh, I'm actually going to remove those, take this bracket off, and go uh, from the back and connect the standoffs from this bracket so that we have, again, the clearance that we need from this drive shaft to an adapter coupler onto the same drive shaft that we were using for the larger motor. Now that I have my bolts connecting the standoffs to the channel from the inside here, uh, our smaller stepper motor is connected to this uh, linear slider. So now this channel slider can be positioned uh, repeatably and accurately by the stepper motor. Um, like I said, this is an excellent way to connect stepper motors if you want to do something like a 3D printer or a chart recorder or like a small CNC mill. Uh, applications where you need this sort of precision and repeatability. And uh, these brackets make it very easy to attach the stepper motors to your channels. Again, uh, a lot of the time you'll need some standoffs between the mount and the channel so that you have enough space to get everything on your drive shaft, but um, these are excellent little pieces of machining and uh, I recommend them for any stepper motor project that you have.